Hi, welcome to showmethecurry.com. I'm Anuja and today I'm going to show you how to make some momos. Now momos are a distant relative of dumplings or pot stickers and uh, momos are made more in uh, you know again in Tibet, Bhutan, Nepal and northeast uh, regions of India. So again everybody's recipe varies a little bit and uh, uh, really it's there's little little differences in all the different regions so uh, this is my version and uh, let's get started. So I'm going to be showing you how to make vegetarian and non-vegetarian momos. So vegetarian being with vegetables and the non-vegetarian being with chicken. Now you can substitute the meat to whatever you like and uh, so whatever the dough I'm making is going to make half vegetarian and half non-vegetarian. So now the momo the actual the skin of the momo batters or the mount stays the same the fillings you can double up the vegetarian or double up the chicken so that way it will be perfect for this mount so we have three cups of all-purpose flour over here so that we're going to add a quarter teaspoon of baking powder mix it and we're going to add water a little at a time it's going to need approximately one cup of water but again everybody's you know it depends on the crop and the kind of consistency of the all-purpose flour so just put a little at a time and you'll see it all binding together and coming together so now you can do this part even in a food processor so once everything comes together and it needs to be a little tough so it's not like your chapati flour you know it's a little tougher um, so bottom line is I needed one cup plus maybe less than a tablespoon more so it really depends on um, you know again your measurements and you know a little bit of varies here and there so I'm going to get rid of this now the bowl so I'm going to work, in, work on it with on the counter it's just easier you have to work the all-purpose flour a little bit because get the uh, glutens going so I'm going to knead this for another 10 minutes boy that was a good workout all right I'm going to leave it here cover it with the towel and then meanwhile we'll get the fillings uh, started so we'll start off with some chicken filling so over here I have 250 grams of chicken which is approximately half a pound of chicken minced so to that I'm going to add in four onions the smaller onions that I have uh, chopped fine and it's approximately um, 300 grams of onions so we're going to mix it all in you know it may seem like a lot of onions but you know that's where chicken tends to be a little dry and this the juice comes and the flavor comes from the onions so don't get shocked and I'm going to add in some carrots just for color so I'm going to add like one carrot which I have grated and I have squeezed out all the juice from it or the liquid so I just kind of squeezed it to this we're going to add one tablespoon of ginger minced one tablespoon of garlic minced going to put in some cilantro just a couple of sprigs now one of the things that goes in is dalda or refined ghee so we're going to use one third cup melted but you can use butter you can use margarine actually margarine would be perfect and some spices I'm going to use uh, about half a teaspoon of garam masala one teaspoon of salt half teaspoon of red chili powder now this is just to give color now if you don't want it spicy just uh, either eliminate it or just put Kashmiri mirch and I'm going to just mix it all in this is all mixed in and look, looks good so now for the vegetarian filling we're going to be using cabbage so this is approximately a little less than half of it this is just to give you an idea what the size of the cabbage is actually it's a little less than half so half would be about here and what we have done is we have uh, we put it in the food processor and let it go and then just sprinkled a little bit of salt on it and let it sit so what that does is it lets gets all the liquid or the moisture out from the cabbage and then we just squeeze the daylights out of it or squeeze the all the moisture out of it and here it is and to this we're going to add one carrot that's exactly what you've done to the carrot as well we've squeezed out all the moisture 
Now, if you do not take, you know, if you're not careful in removing all the moisture from the filling, what's going to happen is your momos are going to be soggy and then the skin is going to get wet and it's just going to tear up while you're cooking it. So now this is onions again, same as before, same amount. This is just to give you a uh, approximate idea of what the size of the onions I'm talking about. This is, we use about four of these. So I would say probably, you know, one large, one and a half large onions in the US. And I'm going to add the onions also here. I'm going to add in cilantro, about three, four, five sprigs. One tablespoon of ginger minced, red chili powder to taste, garam masala, one teaspoon, salt, one teaspoon. Now if you're making this filling ahead of time, I would suggest you put add in the salt just before you actually start making the momos because again what's going to happen is the onions are going to let the water go. So again for the onions, if you're doing it in the food processor, make sure you squeeze out all the liquid, all the moisture, the carrots, the cabbage, everything. Squeeze out the moisture from it and only then put it in. Because otherwise you're going to have a sloppy mess and it's not going to be any fun. So here I have three tablespoons of dalda, same as the chicken filling. You can also use margarine or you can use melt, melted butter. All of them work fine. Mix it well. And we're going to keep it aside. Okay, so let me introduce you to a Momo steamer. Actually, it's just a steamer, so anything, any steamer with a tight lid will work. For the longest time, honestly, I would just take my regular steamer, the one with the vegetable that just opens up, put that in and just work, work with that. So it's been half an hour and we're going to get back to the dough. Here you go. And it's softened up a lot more than it was. So put it back on the board and knead it for another five minutes. And initially when you start making them, you know, they're a little bigger, they're a little thicker. Uh, so, it, you know, you'll probably make a little less. So I'm just going to take out a little piece. So this here's like a large marble size ball. And we're going to be using all-purpose flour for dusting. So I've just got a little plate over here. Take your ball, dip it in the flour and then start rolling. Now the thinner you make it, the better it will be. And of course, try and keep it as round as possible. Now this is best when you have a few people in the house helping you <laughs> because otherwise it can be pretty boring. If you have to make it alone, roll out the skins first, then do the fillings at one time. So once you finish rolling, we'll put it over here and we'll cover it. That way it doesn't get dried out by the time we start filling it. And I'm going to dust it one more time, get all the excess out. If you're good at uh, making chapatis, this will be pretty good for you, pretty easy. So this is about perfect, so about two and a half, three inches, because anything bigger is going to be harder to fold. So I'm going to keep this here and I'm going to carry on and do the rest. The momo skins have been rolled out. So here's a steamer. First thing you're going to do is take a little bit of oil and a brush and just coat the bottom of the steamer so that the momos don't stick. Now a lot of people also put you know either cabbage leaves or lettuce leaves or just put like a little piece of carrot under the momo so that it doesn't stick and it just comes out like that. I also have the bottom of the momo pan filled it up with water not the whole thing probably just a quarter. It needs to be a rolling boil before I put the momos on it. So now for the most intricate part and the most crucial part of this uh, and actually the most beautiful part of momos is the filling. So here is the skins. I'm just going to take the fillings. Here you go. You take it like that in, in your palm and you put it in the center. And here's the intricate part. You're going to go with your one hand. You're going to fold it across but you know kind of just get that in the first part. Fold it in. Pinch. Fold it in, pinch, 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 fold it in, oops, the other way around, pinch. Here you go, here you go. Of course, with lots more practice, you'll get a lot better. 
So I have uh, made the momos. You have a look. Now a couple of tips I definitely want to give, especially to, for beginners, is when you uh, make the momos, make sure you pinch the sides and make sure they seal shut very well, because otherwise they tend to open up, you know, in the middle. And the other thing I did was, the moment I made them, make sure you cover them so that they don't dry up and they don't form a crusty skin. So meanwhile, I have a pan over here and I'm going to get that going and I'm going to, I've got a little bit of water in here. So it's on high, I'm, I'm going to cover it and let it come to a boil. So as far as steaming times are concerned, uh, for the vegetarian ones, you know, for the vegetables and all, they don't need as much time. So probably about between 10 to 12 minutes. But for the, uh, for the chicken ones, since it is raw chicken and it's raw meat, you're going to cook it for at least between 12 to 15 minutes. I hear it boiling and I'm going to put the momos on top. Now, when you're making a few, this is a few, this is perfect. But if you're making lots, please make sure you keep enough space between them so that they you know they don't stick to each other when they cook so here you go this is on and I'm going to put my timer on for 12 minutes because I have vegetarian and what non vegetarian ones in there and then I'll have a look at them so it's been 12 minutes we're going to turn this off of course if you have to do more so don't stop carry on and I'm going to transfer it here and I'm going to show you what we're looking for hard to show on the stove and it's still hot. Now this is what it looks like and the key is that if you touch the skin of the momo it shouldn't be sticky. It should be you know it shouldn't be very sticky. It should be okay. You should be able to lift it. So this looks done. I'm going to pull them out and put them on a platter. Ooh, hot hot hot. Of course I can use tongs. I should be using tongs but who wants to wait? Now that's one of the biggest differences between momos and potstickers or dumplings from um, you know China or uh, any of the other regions, eastern regions. Uh, they use a more glutinous uh, all-purpose flour. Here we just use the regular one and that's exactly what uh, momos are. So this is how it is and they look absolutely fantastic. So I'm going to give it a shot. Of course we made chutney. There's a video out there for it. So look it up. Mm. love the flavor it's just so right on the cabbage I had a vegetarian one I picked up the first one you can taste the, I mean the, the onions and the cabbage and all still have the crunch and there's flavor in there it's just so amazing and the the skin of the momos right on I think it's very important to make sure you uh, roll it out thin enough where it doesn't break but yet it's not it's not just all about the skin it's there's you know enough substance in there and you can taste the whole thing the whole bite is just amazing okay this is a non vegetarian one mm. look at it amazing the that's one of the reasons why we use so much onion is so that the chicken is juicy, it's not dry. This is really, really good. Mm, it's going to be a feast. So if you like this video and you'd like to see more from us, please don't forget to subscribe. So enjoy your momos, vegetarian or non-vegetarian. And join us again on another episode of ShowMeTheCurry.com. Adding a pinch of spice to your life.